Welcome to the sixth in a series of 10 CLE webinars. The title of today's program is Role Plays by Facilitative and Transformative Mediators. Let me describe what's going to happen. Louise Phipps Senft, a transformative divorce mediator, and Bill Donahue, a facilitative divorce mediator, will demonstrate their respective styles through a role play. Andrew Dasani and I will play the divorcing spouses. The role play fact pattern is not known to the mediators or the webinar attendees. The role play starts with the first formal session. There was a consultation when the parties met the mediator, signed the agreement to mediate, provided a complete intake form. Bill will be the first mediator. The session with Bill will last 25 minutes. Louise will sign out of Zoom when the mediation with Bill starts and log back in exactly 25 minutes after logging out. The session with Louise will then start and last 25 minutes. At the end of the two role play sessions, Louise and Bill will start answering questions from the attendees and Andrew and me. If you want to ask a question, please raise your hand at the appropriate time. Before I introduce Louise, I will not be introducing Andrew and Bill because they're already well known to NJP members. Let me welcome a large group of mediators from Maryland, which is where Louise has her mediation practice. NJPM has put on about 60 webinars over the past few years, and you in Maryland and other places may be interested in seeing them. You can find these videos by Googling NJAPM YouTube videos. Let me remind you that I will announce one attendance code during the program. I will repeat that code approximately five minutes after I first read it. Do not put the attendance code in chat. So now let me uh, introduce Louise. So Louise founded the uh, Baltimore Mediation in 1993, the first transformative mediation firm in Maryland. The firm offers mediation, facilitation, negotiation, and conflict resolution. In 2015, she authored the bestseller, Being Re uh, Relational, the seven ways to quality interaction and lasting change. She's an adjunct law professor at the U University of Maryland. She designed and continued to teach what was the first certificated mediation training course offered by Maryland Law School. At Harvard Law School program on negotiation, she taught conflict transformation theory, personal reactivity, and self-awareness practices. She is an IAM Distinguished Fellow and has trained thousands of divorce and commercial mediators across the U.S. and abroad in 40 experiential courses in fundamentals and advanced relational practices. Uh, she also has a podcast. Uh, you can listen to her on her storytelling, which is at www.blinkofni podcast.com, www.blinkofnipodcast.com. So with that, Louise, um, you have anything else you'd like to tell us about yourself? You've done a beautiful job. Thank you, Carl. I feel very welcomed and I'm so delighted that my mediator Maryland colleagues have also joined us in the great state of New Jersey. I, I feel very um, warmed to be with you all in New Jersey uh, because we have a summer place in Cape May, New Jersey, where we go for happiness and respite and your state. And indeed, when our son Archer was catastrophically injured um, in Cape May, it was one of our trained mediators whom I called upon, whom I knew was in New Jersey and in Cape May at the time. So I, I feel like I'm at home with you all. So thank you. And it's good to yeah. see you, Bill and Anju as well. Okay. So Bill, we're ready to go into our mediation, mediation session and Louise will see you in 25 minutes. Okay. And we're set? We're ready to go. Good. Carl, Anjou, I want to welcome you both back. It was nice to meet you at the consult a couple weeks ago. 
So what I would like to do today at our first formal session is sort of outline the issues that have to be addressed so that we can work out a plan for how we're going to uh, address them. Normally when, and I think we discussed this in, in the consultation, we usually start with the parenting issues and then go from there to equitable distribution to the looking at your assets and debts and then going to the support issues, um, alimony and child support. So are you two comfortable with proceeding in sort of that flow? No. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, you know, Bill, we are not sure we really are comfortable about mediating. I'm gonna talk about my two concerns first and then you can, you know, Carl's also happy to chime in, but there are two things. Carl um, um, received a large inheritance uh, in January of 2012, um, which was about $1.4 million and he paid whatever taxes would do. That's a net amount, it was about 2 million. But since that time, he has uh, paid the taxes on the inheritance on div for dividends and capital gains from marital monies. And so the inheritance has grown to be about 5.4 million. And Carl and I are disagreeing about what I'm entitled to from that inheritance. Uh, I want half the gain since 2012, which is about 2 million. Um, so that's my first, you know, if we can resolve that. And also Carl says he wants 50-50 parenting time, especially since he's been home working from home. I guess he's rediscovered the kids. But, um, you know, when COVID is over and he's back on that early morning train, I don't think he can do that 50-50. So, you know, I'm okay with, you know, every other weekend, Friday to Sunday, and two evening dinners. Um, you know, our kids, especially the younger ones, very attached to me. And I really think the kids need a home base. So if he wants to see them on the weekends and have dinner two nights a week, so long as he's available by 6 p.m., I'm okay with that. Um, and maybe in the summer, he can have a little bit more time. But those are my two hot button issues, Bill, that if we can't get to some resolution on them, I think we should not talk about the other issues. Okay, thank you. Carl, um, can, can you respond to what Anju has been saying? Well, those are the two issues. Of course, I would state them entirely differently than she does. Um, you know, on the parenting issue, you know, everybody is getting 50-50 parenting nowadays. What she's talking about as far as parenting is something that that's 20 year old kind of thing. Uh, so we need to talk about that. But I think we would first like to talk about the, uh, the issue about my inheritance and what went on there. So, because it's a large sum of money and there are also important facts here which are, which is, for example, Anju comes from a very wealthy family and is going to be inheriting a lot of money. In fact, her parents give her, I guess, us now a lot of money, like 50,000 during the summer and a lot of other things. So Anju is going to be very well set up. You know, she's going to be taken care of. Um, so we need to talk about the other. I, I think mostly it was an oversight. Um, but I'd be glad to talk about that first. Yeah, my parents are very healthy and young. I might not ever inherit money. I might pass away before they do. So I'm, you know, and it's not, that's not the issue. The issue is every year we pay taxes out of our money earned in the marriage. Oh, okay. can, let, let me ask a question if I could. Andrew, well, it, it seemed to me um, very early on when you started talking, that you said that you have concerns of, you're not sure that mediation is, is where you want to be. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Well, I mean, you know, Carl already has, he knows finances, he's got the finance job and, you know, he can really pull the wool over my eyes. Um, I would 
say this, that, you know, I would just, if we can't settle this, just I'll leave it to my lawyer to fight for me. I'm not that comfortable. I'm a school teacher, you know, this is not my area of expertise. Okay. Um, so you have some concerns that, that, that you may be taken advantage of? Um, I think yes, but I, you know, and if I yeah, can't- But Anshu, I urged you, I urged you to go talk to a financial person. You know, you don't need lawyers. Lawyers are just gonna, you know, bollocks this whole thing up. Go get some financial advice. I've been urging you to do that. Uh, why you don't wanna do that and why you're threatening lawyers, I, I don't understand. I have, I have, I have talked to uh, a lawyer and the lawyer said, it's been commingled. I should really be asking for half that I'm being generous and saying, just give me half the appreciation. Okay, Let, can we go to the facts on it? Sure. Okay, so, you know, I inherited um, $2 million, I think it was in 2012. And, um, there were a lot of taxes, inheritance taxes, estate taxes, long and short term capital gains. And it came down to about a million for after all the taxes were paid, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, I was very careful when all of this money came in and all these taxes were due, I paid that, the, all of that out of the proceeds of my inheritance. So I, I calculated our personal taxes two ways. I calculated it with, uh, with the inheritance and without the inheritance. The difference was what was attributable to here. I paid that out, out of my inheritance, okay? So there was no tax burden. Uh, I must admit after that, I kind of lost track of it. I didn't think about, frankly, taking on, a, on an ongoing basis uh, why it, it, that I should be paying, maybe I should be paying the ongoing taxes in the same way. I just didn't think about it. And so, um, yeah, there was, there's, I, I think I made a mistake, but it was an intimate, intimate, intimate you know, innocent mistake and, um, so that, that's it. No, she, Anju wants all of uh, half of, of all the gains, which is a lot of money. And I'm not opposed to her getting her part of the additional taxes that were um, incurred or paid because of the, uh, of the inheritance. So that's where I am. So let me be sure that I understand what you're saying, that, that you're not saying that Andrew is not entitled to any of that money. It's, it's a question of how much. Yeah, yeah, that's right. She can get, she shouldn't have had to pay half of the income taxes as a joint pay. That, so you're offering me 180,000, is that right? No, I, th I think it's more than that. I think it's about uh, how many years, whatever it is, whatever it is, we'll calculate it out but half of the taxes that were paid and shared by joint, you shouldn't have had to pay. I'm glad to pay that back with interest. But to say that this was intentionally commingled or, you know, it, it, that just doesn't fly. It's not, it's not right. And, you know, no. Carl, at, at this point, do you have a figure that, that you would be um, comfortable offering? Well, I think, and, it, and it, if it, not, that's fine too. But if, if if you've thought about that and have something that Anju could work with, that I, I think might. It's a, I think it's around. Uh, let's see how many years. It's about one hundred and sixty thousand, one hundred and eighty thousand plus interest. Anju, if I could come back to you. Have you, and I know you said that you're not as um, 
I guess sophisticated with money as Carl is, I, I think was what you were getting at before. Right, I'm a um, school teacher. Um, and Carl, what, what's your background? Um, I'm in finance, I'm an investment analyst. Okay, so Anju, have you had a chance to come up with a figure that, that seems appropriate to you? Two million. Two million? That's half the appreciation since 2012. You know, but Bill, you know, the only commingling, if there was any commingling at all, was that some of the taxes were paid out of joint. We never took any of the money out and used, I never took any of the money out and used it for, you know, a better lifestyle, never did any of that. Yeah, and that's part of the problem. You know, he's really, even though he earns it, he's very, very, could I say the word cheap? Am I allowed to say that? No, it, it's, no it's not, Ripley. it wasn't, no, I'm not cheap. The problem was I need to I needed to look after myself because you know I'm 52 years old and I need some substantial retirement income, you know, assets. If I gave half of it to Anju and then uh, something happens like we're getting divorced, which in fact we are, you know, she would have taken that money. And at the same time, she has very rich money, rich parents who are going to, you know, she's going to inherit the money. You know, so I'm just looking at little, this. Every time I, I hear him talk about my parents, it's upsetting. You know, that, me. That's the problem is you're just annoyed about this. You don't need the money. You're going to have the money. So. So I understand now what the conflict is between the two of you. Let's try and come up with some ways that we might be able to resolve it. Um, one thing that is often helpful, and it sounds like you've done this to some extent, is to talk to your attorneys, not just to financial people who can be very helpful in, in a situation like this. But if, if you both talk to your attorneys and they're telling you very different things, that might suggest to you that if you litigate the issue, the outcome is not clear, right? Unless one of your attorneys is, doesn't know what they're talking about. You know, if they are both, both competent counsel, which I believe you both have, um, then it should make it clear to you that this is a gray area. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, my attorney says, look, you didn't co-mingle it in the traditional sense where you put it into a bank account and, and used it like joint assets. You know, if at most this is like a technical violation, yes, you should cure it, but, but that doesn't entitle Anju to half of, uh, of all the gains on this thing. That, that's where he is. And, and that makes sense to me because this, there was never any intent to co-mingle this. It was year after year, the taxes got paid from our joint monies. And now Carl is saying, oh, I shouldn't have done that. But it's, you know, he's already done it. It's like it's not completely exempt anymore. And Carl can't accept that. He says it's a technicality. But the attorney I went to said that it's not exempt anymore because it's been you know, the marital funds, we paid the taxes. And um, Carl just won't budge. He just won't budge. He is stuck on giving me half of that gain plus the interest. Oh, thank you for the interest, by the way. Um, but, you know, 180,000. That's what he keeps telling me every night at the dinner table. And then he tells me my parents are rich. If he could stop talking about my parents, we might have a more civil conversation. Well, if your parents weren't in our lives so much, we would have had a better marriage too. So that you know, cuts it a lot of different ways here. You want Do to talk I... about how we could have had a better marriage, Carl? No, I don't want to get into that. I want to try to keep this as much as we can factual and, and just move along. Anshu, you said that we could have a more civil conversation. Um, that might be helpful here. You know, if you two just talk to each other about 
what you both need and want out of this. And again, I would urge you both to keep in mind that when you have counsel who are telling you very different things, it should suggest to you that the outcome if you litigate is, is not clear. One of you could win and one of you could lose. Or as you probably both know, courts could come in somewhere in between. And it'll so, cost us a lot of money too. That's the thing. This thing is gonna, to, to litigate, it's gonna cost a lot. I'm, you know, willing to, I'm willing to negotiate, but I am not willing to accept the 180,000. Plus compounded interest, but you know, can can we move on to the other bill? Can we move on to the other issue? Let let me ask you. I just I want to let this one sit here. You know, that's fine. And think about what we've talked about here. And when we come back to this, we can address it again. Would it be helpful to talk about other assets in the marriage? No, are there other go, assets? That we, I, I want to go to the other one because I'm getting a feeling Anju is not going to move on this one. I want to see if there's going to be any movement on the other one. Okay. So the, you're referring to the parenting, the second parenting issue. issue. Right. Where I, I want 50 50 parenting, you know, or approximately 50 50. And Anju's offering me this antiquated parenting plan every other weekend in a couple of dinners. You know, that's like 1980. What the heck is going on here? You know, it's like only women can parent. That's ridiculous. You know, Are you done? I, well, I wasn't, but go ahead. Look, I mean, hey, if we can work out the first one, maybe I'll be a little bit more flexible on the parenting. What? You're telling me that if I give you more money, then you're going to... Bill, can she do that? I mean, she's trying to trade my parents for money. I mean, my parents, my kids for money. That's inappropriate. Isn't that? Oh, my God. Well, well let's see if we can look at the parenting issues a, a little differently. Um, but can she do that? She can propose anything that she wants. Either one of you can. I find that disgusting. No, don't overact. Come on. Let's, let's see if we can change the focus here a little bit. Just number of overnights or time is not always the best way to look at a parenting schedule. One way that you can look at it is the relationship that you have with your children. And how can we come up with a parenting plan that you can each spend time with them uh, that, that will nurture and facilitate those relationships that you have. Sometimes we try to create parenting plans that repair relationships if if you have not had a good one with your children. Sometimes we come up with, with parenting plans that just help you sustain the relationships that you have. But if you think about the time that you're going to spend with them, and of course, obviously, you have to take into account your, your own schedule, your work schedules. But if we can look at it more in terms of, of what relationship you want to have with your children, and what relationship do you want your children to have with the other parent, it sometimes makes it easier for people to talk about and come up with with time schedules as opposed to just saying a certain number of overnights. Does that make sense? Well, a little abstract, but yeah, it makes sense. It it tends to work if we if you really do, and it takes a little time, but but to think about on the day to day what will you do with the children if you have them? What does your time schedule permit? What are their schedules like? If we take those things into account and really bring it in as part of a, of a discussion, um, we might be able to come up with, with a parenting plan that works for both of you. Well, I wanna be in their lives a substantial amount of time because I think the children need both parents. You know, Anju brings things to her, you know, parenting, and I bring things to it. So I think they would benefit most to the extent that they had us sort of equally. And I I don't mean absolutely equally, but I mean sort of equally, right? So it's surprising that you want to share the children equally or somewhat equally, but when it comes to the money, 
then it's all about you. Yeah, because they're humans and money is not. Yeah, but I'm also concerned I'm not going to have enough. And, you know, just like you worry about it, you know, I have to uh, also worry about it and um, worry about I don't what? have the future what are you earning worrying capacity. About? I'm what not you... going to earn what you earn in the future. Yeah, so but that's nothing to do with children. Our children should get the best from both of us. And that means, I think, more time for both of us, or for they, me they anyway. They need a home base. Home they base need is a home base, and you oh, know Carl Jr. is very clingy, and he wants to be with mom. Wants to be with mom. Well, that's part of the problem too. I mean, you've you've sort of created that clinginess. You like it, and so I think he needs more of a male influence in his life, a father around more. You know, to every other weekend. That's ridiculous. You know, I have the same school schedule as the kids when they're off i'm off and when you know COVID is over and carl is back at work we're going to be the same thing he's going to be getting on that morning train to new york and all of a sudden it'll be back to you know 2019. you know what if we whatever the plan is and i don't think i'll be going back to work certainly not the same way if there's a problem, I'll take care of it. That's what parents do. You know, if, if you had a different job, one who paid that paid more money and you had to be at it, you'd have the same problem. So that I don't buy that as an I mean, issue. when we were married, we agreed that because I had the more flexible job, this was part of my job, the children. And now well, you know, yeah, that's because I was in that's because I was there. We were together. And now we're not going to be together. So things have got to change. And, and that's the way I think. about it. So, Bill, you're an attorney. So why don't you tell us what your thoughts are? Well, in, in terms of if, if your question is, what do I think a court would do? I, I, I would rather not give that opinion. But as a mediator, what I would like to try and help you to do is bring the focus back to what I said before and the relationships that the children have with each of you. And if you look at each of your proposals for parenting time, how will, if you got that proposal, if that became the parenting plan, what effect would it have on the relationships that the children have with each of you? If we can keep the, the conversation there, it's, um, it, it tends to, to result in a, in a parenting plan that meets both of your needs, but also the needs that the children have to be with their parents. So I guess I didn't answer your question, did I, Anju? No, but no, you just danced around that one. It's, well, it's, I'm, I, let me just go back that I'm happy to be more flexible on the parenting if I see Carl moving on the <clears throat> issue of the inheritance. Carl. Well, it's not going to be two million. You want two million. That's not going to happen. So make me an offer. I, I did make you an offer. Why don't you come back with an offer and what you're willing to do on parenting? Well, I find this offensive, training dollars for kids time. Oh, come on. Let's not talk about what is offensive. You know what was offensive. We don't need to bring it up here. Anyway, if, if you do that, give me a proposal. But I'm telling you, it's, it's not going to be close to $2 million. Um, I think we're coming close to the end of our session here. So it sounds to me like you are both willing to at least stay here to negotiate. I'll, to I'm see. willing to come back with a number. I, I want to talk to my lawyer. I'll come back with a number. Uh, Carl? A num Okay, I think we are. Um, thank you very much, Bill, for this, um, for your services. We'll be back in touch with you, maybe. Good, thank you. Okay, now, Bill, you'll turn your video off and okay. your audio off, since there's no reason for you not to see what's going to happen now. Right. And then, uh, do you know how to do that, Bill?
<laughs> no, <laughs> you know I don't. <laughs> just, okay, just, wait, I can stop video. Yes. It's in the okay. bottom left-hand corner. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And no, then there's I, a little mute button, Bill, also in the bottom left-hand yeah. corner. Okay. It might be in your upper right-hand corner, but. <laughs> All right. Okay. You're on. Welcome back, Carl and Anju. It's good, good to see you again. Good to see you. Yeah, thank you. You know, I I didn't ask you when we got together when we first met, and I thank you very much for signing the consent form to mediate. I suspect perhaps you might have some questions now that you've slept on things, but I didn't get a chance to ask you if prior to today you've ever used the mediation process before or worked with a mediator before. Have either of you? I haven't. You no, haven't I haven't all? either. You haven't either, Anju. No. Well, it's, uh, it's a special privilege uh, then to be your first experience as a mediator. There are wonderful mediators and as the field grows, I hope that uh, from today you'll have a good experience and also that and into the future as you think about how it is that you make decisions for your family and how it is that you, as life changes, uh, that you bring in a mediator. There are also sadly some bad experiences with mediators um, where people can feel like they got their arms twisted or the mediator didn't really believe in them. Um, and sometimes people leave angrier uh, from a mediation rather than feeling a bit more grounded or having had an opportunity for new understandings. And each mediation has highs and lows. Uh, nothing's perfect, um, but, but I do invite both of you today into a process that really believes in your capacity, uh, really believes in each of you, uh, despite differences, um, as well as um, shared uh, values or pieces that might be important for you, that each of you has capacity to make informed decisions that are gonna work for you. They're gonna work for your family. Uh, they're gonna work for um, your, your son. They're gonna work for your lives. Um, as difficult sometimes as it can be and also as joyful um, as that can be. And I, I don't know if you've got questions about that, but I, I thought I would review uh, some pieces that we did cover briefly, just so briefly last time, um, if I may uh, cover them. But I do wanna pause if there are any, any questions just about a process that believes in your capacity and welcoming you back. Anything um, like no, I, I, you know, I have some questions, but I think I'll hold them till we go along. All right, all right, you can hold them till, till we go along. I want you to know that you're able to ask them at, at any time. Okay. Um, and if I don't have the answers for them, if they're around process, I hope that I do. But if I don't, uh, there are plenty of other wonderful resources outside of this session today that you can rely upon to get good information as well. Anju, how about you? Any any questions so far? Uh, Just well, uh, thank you, Louise. Um, so I'm not sure I want to stay in the mediation, and there are two issues that. Um, I need to kind of feel comfortable that we're going to come to resolution on before we go forward. Otherwise, I think I'm just feel like I'll let the attorneys handle this. Um, so the first is this issue of uh, the inheritance call God in 2012. Um, and so that was in uh, January of 2012. He got about 2 million and he paid the taxes out of the inheritance and ended up with 1.4 million. And that I didn't have an argument with, but every year since then, he's paid capital gains and he's paid um, taxes on dividends from our joint account, right? I mean, he kind of just uh, slipped that in hoping or thinking I wouldn't notice. But when I went to my attorney, he was like, did you know that? And I said, no, I didn't. But now that I know, you know, I think that I should be entitled to half of the total inheritance, but I'm trying to be generous in saying, I'll just take half of the appreciation and the appreciation's about 4 million. So I'm saying that I'm entitled to 2 million. I mean, of course I'm willing to negotiate that, but you know, Carl is now saying, yeah, I should have paid the taxes. So 
I'll give you half the taxes I should have owed you plus interest. Well, you know, thank you, Carl. And the other thing is about the parenting. And, you know, Carl used to commute to New York every day from our home in Summit, got on the early train, came back after seven. And now during COVID, he's, you know, been able to spend more time with the kids. So now he's talking about 50-50, like it's a pizza pie. He wants 50-50. I mean, I'm happy if he has alternate weekends with the kids and dinners, you know, two nights a week if he's available. But now he's saying he wants 50-50. So these are my two issues that, you know, I want to be able to resolve today so that I could move forward with the mediation. Yeah. Gosh, Anju, thank you uh, for putting those two issues right on the table, right up front, especially when you're not sure that you want to even stay um, in mediation and, and you're really considering just let the attorneys handle it. You, you've got two big issues. Um, you've got Carl's inheritance uh, that goes back to 2012 and really what that looks like with regard to dividing it uh, for you right now. You've got a couple options on the table, whether it would be half of the inheritance or half of the appreciation, which you think is generous as an offer to Carl, which would be right now it's about $4 million. Um, you're willing to negotiate, but there's this piece that, you know, Carl um, hoped you might not have noticed that he paid the cap gains and the taxes um, kind of slipped it in on you. Um, I, I assume I, I assume you're just quoting her words. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because uh, what's so I, important is that you can have an opportunity, Carl, to kind of hear it twice. And if there's something you disagree with. Um, but, but you're not saying I slipped it in on. Are oh, you? yeah, right. I've got no idea. But okay. sure that's that's important for you. you, you okay. Like yeah, yeah, okay. You know, right. I, yeah. It yeah. just sounded to me like you were saying. You're agreeing with. Yeah, Carl right. Rogers, it, uh, again, okay. you know, Carl, that's just, um, I just so appreciate your stopping me on that because something that can be very unexpected uh, when people haven't worked with a, a mediator and a mediator who really believes in them mm -hmm. is, is the experience of working with a mediator who's neutral. Um, and you might say, well, that didn't sound neutral to me, um, right? Yeah, um, I, I was. I was reflecting, um, Anju, because it's all about quality decision making. Um, in this case, for Anju, about that, and for you to be able to hear it again, so you can make some decisions, knowing a little bit better what it is that might be a barrier as Anju sees it. Okay. Okay. And of now, course, it works in the other direction too, right, Anju? Um, when, when Carl would speak, I would want to make sure I could reflect him so you can have a chance to hear Carl again and, um, and understand a little bit more clearly what might be Carl's barrier um, to this issue or also what might be some ideas that, that really work for the two of you that come from each of you. Uh, so yeah, Carl, thank you. And if, something, okay. if you're questioning something or something doesn't make sense, you know, please do it again. I, I hear, I'm here to serve both of you. And the process is, is a very active process. Um, you know, being neutral doesn't mean that I'm gonna be just a bump on a log. Um, I wanna make sure, Anju, that what you say is accurate, uh, that you've had a chance to say it in the way you want to say it to Carl, uh, because it doesn't matter, you know, to me, um, I'm here for the both of you so you all can have a constructive conversation helping you to clarify what your barriers are, what your issues are, what your goals are, what your options are, your preferences, and to understand the situation more fully. Um, is that beginning to make some sense? I know. Yeah, that's fine. I just, I, okay. Cool. I'm, a, I'm comfortable now. Comfortable now. And Anju, I mean, for you, you're still maybe weighing if, you know, what can mediation uh, do for you? Will you stay in the process? I really want to get to the meat of this you. discussion, so. Yeah, I mean, you've got another big one, right? The parenting um, and how much things have changed uh, during COVID where Carl used to commute and now with COVID, he's spending more time with the kids and you want to resolve that? Well, he's, I mean, somewhere along the line, you know, this is not going to last forever. Yeah, what the, the COVID, the, what's not going to last forever? COVID somewhere. and, you know, the working from home and all that other stuff. Yeah, yeah, so you're anticipating that somewhere along the line, it's not going to last forever. So what actually does that look like? And if Carl is saying, <clears throat> you know, I want 50-50 now with the kids. And well, Luis, let me just put this on the, uh, 
table for you. I mean, if, if we can resolve the financial issue, I'm much more flexible about the parenting. Oh, got it. So the financial issue for you, it really is comes first. If you all, you and Carl can make some progress in resolving the financial. You know, I, that, this really offends me. Yeah, it what's offends that? me that she says, ah, if I get more money, you get what you want with parenting. Mm. There's that, that, I find that outrageous. Yeah, it's, it's outrageous like, for you. I mean, it's pretty offensive to have Anju say, well, if we resolve the money issue, then you get the kids. Well, can she say that? I mean, can she do that? Yeah, so let me let me go back, Carl, as, as outrageous as that might um, feel to you. You and Anju in this process can talk about anything that the two of you want. Um, and my job as neutral is to be as supportive as I can be to the two of you having the conversation, however you frame it, however you decide you want to talk about whatever issue comes first, whatever there, there can be what's important for you that the other person doesn't believe that's important. And so that can become right. a mediation unto itself, right? Okay. It, it really just shows me that, you know, on Jews, two overnights every other weekend, she doesn't believe in that. She mm -hmm. just believes in, yeah, I'll give you pretty much what you want as long as I get enough money. Aren't you? I think that's terrible. So I mean, stop really being so judgmental. You must be, you know, taking acting lessons to be so outraged. Mm, you know, there are things I could be outraged about, but I'm not going to talk about them in front of Louise. You know what they are and I know what they are. Mm. They have nothing to do with what's happening, why we're getting a divorce, nothing. You can talk about it, but it doesn't make any difference. Louise isn't a marriage counselor. I'm not going to talk about that stuff with her. That's fine. Don't. Don't raise it. Well, let me, let me say this about the conversation that the two of you are having with each other now. Number one, I don't want to get in the way of that. Um, you're making progress on that. I'm, I hear, I'm here to be supportive. What it sounds as though you've just raised is that for you, Carl, you don't believe Anju about the two nights a week and dinner. So you might want to check in with her on that. And there's this piece about what you are each deciding not to talk about in mediation. It's completely up to you what you decide to talk about. And right. what you decide will be important because you need to have the Look, other- This is no big secret. Andrew says I had an affair. Whether I had an affair or not, it's irrelevant to getting divorced because the marriage was already dead. You, you know that, Andrew. I mean, it was just over. Carl, and, do you, I'm gonna pause you for a sec. You just said, you know that, Anju, our marriage was dead. Yes. Do, you, do you wanna check in with Anju on that? Andrew? I mean, you cheated and you cheat it. So I'm going to leave it at that. At this point, that ship has sailed, right? This marriage is That's dead what now. I'm saying. So I don't know why you raised it. I don't know why you raised it. It has no relevance to what's because going on Because it was a betrayal. Here. And it, to me, if you're going to cheat that way, you'll cheat on the numbers. You'll cheat on everything. Mm. Let's, can we go to the numbers? Yeah, let's go to the numbers. I don't want to talk about this. Okay. okay. So you all want to be able to go to the numbers and start, start with the numbers and, and look at um, possibly the parenting or possibly. Yeah, if we can get to the parenting team. after that, that'd be good. Okay, sure. I, I do want to um, just pause for a moment and say that if, um, if what's something you just said, Anju, that if you've experienced Carl to have betrayed you and to be a cheat, that he will therefore just cheat on anything financial. And if you all need to have some conversation about that while you're talking about the finances, I just want you to know that the mediation process is here to support that. So, so you wanna talk about fi the financial? Right. Okay, all right. Where do you all wanna, wanna begin? I'm, I'm gonna actually make, make a note of that. I don't know if you can see it very well. See, I'll put it over here. I have my little whiteboard here. Oh, okay. Uh, we, Carl, and, and of course that marker's been used a lot. 
I did another one, Anjou. Come to mediation. To discuss and make decisions about the financial aspects of our of our marriage. Are you are you all um, here in the mediation because you're divorcing? Has there been a decision to divorce? Yes, we're definitely divorced. Separation. We're divorcing. That is the one thing we agree upon. Yeah, we agree on that. Okay, so there has mm -hmm. been a, an agreement and, and both yeah. of you are in accord that you are divorced. Right. Okay. So, About our divorce. Yeah. So is there anything else that, that you would want to be discussing? Um, I, I do want to put in a little word, Anjou. It's, I, I've heard it many times and I myself have called upon uh, mediators to help me in, in my life and in my marriage too, from my own team that I, you know, you just want to get it like resolved today, you know, like yesterday. Uh, and, and these things can, can take a while, but I follow the two of you. And if you resolve things today, it's fantastic. If you don't, it's still fantastic because that means you just need to have more time to think about things, collect other information, check in with other people about it. So the timeline is yours. Um, but I, I just also, I did want to say that because um, I wish that we all had magic wands for our lives, <laughs> but, but these things can take a while, but people tend to go, you know, to go slow to go fast in a mediation process. So the two of you come to mediation, you've made this decision to divorce. You want to make some decisions and discuss the financial aspects. You well, want to just one financial. about this inheritance. Specifically yeah, just, about one, inheritance. just the inheritance. So it was really about the financial aspects of our divorce, especially or in particularly the inheritance. Right. right. Today, right. today they inherit. We know we have to do all the other stuff, but today <laughs> it's the inheritance because this is a hot button. For, it's a hot button. Uh, it's a hot Andrew. button for both of you, it sounds yeah. like, or, or maybe just for Anjou. Is that what you're thinking, Carl? Well, it's more for her. More I mean, for she's her. the one who feels, feels something about this. Of course, you have it in your name, so you don't That's, want me so, to touch it. So it was an inheritance. That's why it was in my name. I wanted to have something that as we go, I go forward in life, I had something that was mine. Now, Anjou's parents are very rich. She's going to inherit a lot of money from them. They already give her, you know, give us, I guess, a lot of money on a yearly basis. You know, so she's going to be taken care of. My parents are young. And I, and I have to have the same type of, I want to have the same type of thing. You know, not everything has to be ours. This inheritance was mine. I wanted to keep it that way. Then you shouldn't, then you shouldn't have paid the taxes from the inheritance. I told you that was probably just, I, you know, I paid it to begin with. That's where the large hunk of money was. You know, I inherited 2 million. Out of that, I paid $600,000 of a variety of taxes out of the inheritance. So I only had a million four. After that, I kind of thought about it because we never use it. I never use it. We don't, I don't take any money out of it for us, for me, for anything. It just sits there. And, oh, and so, oh, I got, yeah. So, so you got this inheritance and you, neither one of you have actually used it or relied upon it because Anjou, your parents have uh, given the two of you money over the years and it's really taken care taking care of you all yeah i mean the fact is that carl has let it grow we've never enjoyed it there's no you know it's not like we took vacations on it or we bought a bigger house or you know yeah, you know you never used it for a bigger house vacations no it's grown but in fact you know forty thousand of our income every year our after-tax income went to pay the taxes on it. That's mm -hmm. not just the money, but the fact that we could have enjoyed a better lifestyle oh, and we yeah. had access to that money. So kind of, there's sort of even two pieces underneath this issue of the inheritance. One, one is that, it, it, as you mentioned, Carl, you know, first thing is it's mine and I'd like to keep it that way, but it got a little messy when 
over the years after I paid the first 600 from inheritance, I then after that paid the capital gains each year from, and as you would then say, joint uh, Anjou from our, from our joint properties. Right. And so, it really was an oversight. It, and I agree. It really was an oversight. I agree with Anjou that she should get back her share of the taxes that were paid out of joint with interest. You know, this is- So, so that's another- You know, it's interesting you say interest, but not how the stock market has performed over the last eight, nine years. No, because that would give you half of the gain. Pardon? That would give you half of the gain. Well, that's what I'm really entitled to is the whatever was taken at the minimum. Okay, let me just put aside the two million to say that uh, if you had not spent that money on taxes and it had been in the stock market, what would it have done? Because that's what you ended up getting because you didn't pay the taxes. So it's not all the gain. It's not all the gain, but it is the gain on whatever, you know, like in 2013, 40,000 should have been taken out of that account to pay for taxes, but instead it remained reinvested. Yeah, that's what I've been saying. And I'm saying that you, only 20,000, by the way, of that 40,000 was yours. Uh, but nevertheless, yes, I made a mistake. It was an oversight. I'm willing to rectify the mistake. Well, I don't think that's enough. And you keep talking about my parents and that upsets me. My parents are young. I, they could outlive me. I'm not getting that money. You know, they may throw us 50,000 a year, but I'm not getting. Of course you, know, you are. Parents. You're, you're the only child. They're going to give you the money. Come on. You're going to be set. I could be 90 before I get that money or 80. You know, my parents are very young. I don't think 70 is very young. Well, they're 20 years older than me and I'm 45. So they had me when they were very young. Well, they will always take care of you and you will inherit that money. I your, have nothing. Not I have nothing that, I mean, what well, am I going to- Why don't I ask Louise what she thinks? She's been doing a lot of mediation. Maybe she has an answer. I'm sure she's yeah. seen this before. Well, I may have seen many things before um, and I can hopefully help you all with this process, but you know, each family is so unique. And by way of example, like Anju, just a little bit ago, there's some sadness about, you know, hey, Carl, we didn't, you didn't give me access. We didn't even have access to that money that was growing where we could have gotten another house or gone on vacations together. Um, you know, it's not just about the money, but about what what we didn't have. Yeah, let me just time. tell you that Carl is so thrifty, he cuts his own hair. Wow, Carl is that thrifty, he cuts his own hair. You know, I have no idea what has me, that relates to anything. Do let you, me also- wait, do, you wanna, do you wanna ask? Do you wanna ask Anju, like, does that relate to anything? It's just um, his attitude towards money and it's his, you know, his, he's not- I, I gotta tell you, there was another reason I wanted to keep that separate. It was because of my uneasiness with where the marriage was and where it potentially was going. You know, it might have been entirely different if you know we had a marriage that was working a hundred percent, but even then it wasn't. Mm. You know, there were a lot of issues. And so, you know, I was concerned that this day would happen. And, I'm, by, I'm and by, God, no, by God, it did happen. Now, just think if I had done that. Carl is nine years old. Right name, I, mean, I, would, I was giving birth to Carl Jr. You were thinking about how to end the marriage and what you would have. No, I wasn't thinking of ending it. I was saying that there, I knew it wasn't going right. Mm. So, gosh, there is another reason, Carl, that you want to share with Anju today about why you didn't tell her or why that money wasn't shared because you were uneasy about where the marriage was going. You were not talking about ending the marriage. That, that was not it. No, just, uh, just 
just as an and look, you know, Carl's it, parents are divorced, and, so he comes from that. Yeah, kind like of you're saying, I Anju, don't get me wrong, I loved you. I mean, that is seven that years saying, later. No, actually, longer. So anyway, well, nine know, years know, after this inheritance. A moment ago, you said that that really wasn't it, Anju. Did you say I I loved you? No, 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 no. I'm not saying no, that I, at all. No. I'm saying that we had Carl yeah. Jr. We had Carl Jr. And he's, you know, I'm de I'm delivering this child, and he's thinking about leaving the marriage. Or he never told me that he felt uncomfortable. It's only recently. That, that's really new information for you. He never told you that he felt uncomfortable in 2012. But you know, I want to go back to the money. I know that Lou Louise. You know, you want well, to sing Kumbaya, but I want to talk about the money. And yeah, I'm, you want to talk about the money and the barriers. So, you know, you all had shared that you had about 25 minutes today. Um, I think you had some other things to do. Maybe I could just give you a, a summary, if that would be helpful, of what you've covered so far, because we'll have another session. I know you've set up another session, and and I'll give you some time, perhaps, to think about things as we are beginning to actually come to the end of that period of time. Um, okay. May I do that? Would that would be helpful? Only yeah, we'd appreciate, I'd appreciate that. that. Yeah, I, I think that's worthwhile. Okay. So you all have come in to mediation. Uh, you're making a decision to try this process. See if it can help you make some decisions and have some breakthroughs on the finances. And in particular, the one that the two of you have decided to talk about first, which is the inheritance. The inheritance uh, has been around since 2012. Uh, taxes were paid from the inheritance, but there were also taxes that have been paid from the marital estate, from the, from the, the joint holdings from the two of you. There are, some, there are some tender pieces under that, that for you, Carl, um, the marriage as you saw it from the time when you got that inheritance was, you were a little uneasy about it. Um, you weren't thinking of divorce, but you weren't, weren't too sure about, about the marriage. And, and for you, Anjou, it's like, as you look back, even with your parents um, giving you all uh, enough money that you've had a good life and you both have, have relied upon that money, you didn't have access to this money. And um, it could have perhaps afforded you all a, good, a better time with each other. There are some differences in how you view money. Um, for you, Anju, you would say that Carl is, is a, of, a, of the type of man who would not even spend money to get his hair cut. Um, and, and for you, you haven't actually stated the kind of um, spender that you are. But you're looking at how much of the what is now left and as it's grown, I think you said that it was about 1.4 million right now will be divided between the two of you so that you can each have the security of knowing that you have enough money to be able to move forward because you've made a decision to divorce. Actually, Louise, uh the amount now is 5.4 million. So the, the, orig the original amount was 5.4. That's grown yeah. in, the, in the market, yeah, right. yeah. untouched, un, um, unused, yeah. if you will. Yeah, and what you do with that. Um, there perhaps are other kinds of things you would add to that. And clearly you have some decisions to make around you know, your children. Um, as well as other finances. And as you said, Carl, that you know that those things are gonna, are gonna happen. I'm just wondering if maybe there is uh, some new information that you've gotten today. Anju, you mentioned that what Carl shared with you, like you hadn't heard that before. Um, and there was also an affair that happened in the course of this marriage somewhere between 2012 and where you are here today. And how does that play in and factor out? And you know, Carl, you would say it doesn't, you know, it happened um, that that was not related to this. Um, and for you, Anju, you're saying, well, I, I have felt very, very betrayed about that. As you're making decisions and moving into another chapter of your lives, you have an opportunity to consider what you've heard from each other and, and to really sleep on it and, and to check in if you so choose with counsel or any other support person whom you rely upon or 
you know, it could be a very, really dear friend or a, or a spiritual supporter or a mental health supporter, or, you know, get out in the fresh air and walk around and, and let, you know, nature talk to you. But these are, these are big decisions. And it, it sounds like there is um, a, a fairly, a, a large amount of money, 5.4 million. And well, as for you, uh, Carl, as you've said about Anjou, uh, her parents who are rich, and have supported the two of you and will continue to also help Anjou. How do the two of you all, not to be answered today, I put this out rhetorically, how do you see your futures? What, how much do you need? What is enough? And where will be the emotional satisfaction to know that you've split this the right way, knowing that marital assets have been used, they've grown, and that you're now entering a new phase of your marriage now moving into a divorce. So we're going to close now. Are okay. Okay, well, okay to close. Yeah, that's, anything that's you fine. Want to say? Anything yeah. you want to say to each other um, about. Oh, I'm tired. I feel tired. I'll yeah, see tired. you next time, Louise. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. For okay. Me, anything for you, Carl? No, i um, still like to work on getting something specific on the financials okay yeah, it'll, it'll come I okay can, i can write it up for you just like you've got these options you know and so i want to leave you with these options there are okay. more you've got this two million you've got this 5.4 million half that's really not what you're asking for anju you've got this idea of the forty thousand annual payment from it sounds like 2013 forward plus the interest would be paid to Anjou. You've got a 40,000 plus the number of years, plus what it would have gained in the stock market that would be paid to Anjou. And you've got this idea of another amount as you take into context payments that have been made by Anjou's parents. All right. You can think about those things. Um, okay. We can open up with that when you come back or anything else that you'd like to say. Okay. okay thank well, thank you. you very much. You bet. It's been okay. Been a pleasure being your mediator. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bill, it's time for you to return. Okay. You are there. Uh, here okay. I am. <laughs> Good. So, what I'd like to do now is open this up to questions. Normally, uh, I think Andrew and I would do some debriefing and whatever. But I want to open it up first to uh, our panelists, I mean, to our attendees. And I got something from Lynn Norsha saying, I need to give the code, which I was going to do, <laughs> but I will give it right now. But thank you, Lynn. The attendance code is 2122. Two, two. Two, one, two, two. And I'm going to read it again in about five minutes. And Lynn, if I don't, send me another, send me another thing. Okay. So uh, I, I encourage everybody, whether you're from Maryland or you know, wherever you are, member of NGAPM, et cetera, if you have a question, uh, please raise your hand. Because so. We must have some questions here. The remarkable, if it doesn't. So, okay, Jay, Jay, say if you're, go ahead, ask your question. Okay, uh, do you hear me? Yes. Okay, fine. A um, couple of things uh, with respect to the inheritance, first of all. Um, was that inheritance, and maybe I missed it, was that put into an account in Carl's name only? Or yes. it, okay. And did you uh, actively participate in in um, in growing that fund? No. No. All right. Um, you did a little. You decided what was in the account. You did some sales, right? You didn't have a manager manager. No, no. It was, it, it was a mutual fund, an aggressive mutual fund. Oh, aggressive. Okay. Um, and I agree with you, Carl, with respect to reimbursing. Uh, uh, Anju for the taxes that were uh, paid out of the joint monies, which you indicated you, you did in the beginning. Uh, 
of uh, this deal. So you, I don't know how many years you have to go back and reconstruct the numbers. But then also, what about the monies that Andrew's parents had had provided? Was that monies that was used to the enjoyment of the entire family? Yes. So is there a responsibility to reimburse Andrew for your share of that monies? No, that no, no, that that's that was clear. And, and, Given yeah. to both of us, et cetera. Mm -hmm. All right. And then I didn't quite understand why you would pay money taxes off the inheritance. That would have been paid if it was from the inheritance, it would have been paid by the estate. Or if it was, this, you know, uh, unless you were just phrasing it incorrectly, that these are gains. Jay, well, let, let me ask you not to quibble with. You know, I, I'm just trying to. The taxes, the calculation, it's that's just the fact pattern. All right. Okay. Well, that, that's what I had to say about it. Okay. Uh, Terry, go ahead and. Okay. Um, great presentation. My question is as a financial person, is financial, our financial area so specific that you would not have known? or the oversight of putting the money into a joint account, or um, if I'm using the words correctly, should you have known as a financial expert or is financial areas so explicit in different areas that that would have been easy to overlook because not knowing finances on my part would make me think you deviously set something up since you're a financial specialist. It's a trust issue there. Uh, yes, I, I would suggest that there is a trust issue. That most likely, if I'm paying $40,000 a year in taxes that generated as a result of the fund, as a financial person, I would probably know that. I probably consciously made myself unaware of it. That's my take. Okay. That, that would be, but then the wife there feels he knew what, exactly what he was doing. Yeah. I, I see that part there, but as a financial person, and I know we can get into different areas, and, and some can be so specialized that you wouldn't know all the other things. Yeah, and, and that was my concern. It, it, um, if, as Andrew said, um, there was a sense of mistrust beginning there, and that you should have known it, what else are you hiding? Well, that we, that we could explore that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Sherry, if you unmute and ask. Hi, can you, can you hear me? Yes. Great, thank you. Hi, Louise, it's Sherry from Calvert. Hi, Sherry, um, how are you? I, I would love to know from both Carl and Anju, since these were so completely different mediation types, what was your experience? Um, a personal experience with both mediators and um, what what did you feel like you got from each and what did you feel like maybe was missing from each? Anju? So um, as I'm a mediator myself, it's also, it's hard to critique the other mediators because everyone has their own style and I like both in different ways. I think what I was surprised at is neither one of them really wanted to get the facts of the case up front before they started down the road, which I might have done. Um, I thought Luis talked more than Bill, and I would say that was um, not as comfortable for me. But on the other hand, I think Luis also um, got me emotionally involved in a different way than Bill. On the other hand, um, in terms of where we were at the end of each session, I think we were exactly in the same place with yeah. Louise and Bill. Um, so they took different routes with different methodologies, but they got the fact they got the the hot button issue on the table, and both didn't. Neither one was offended with the idea that I was I wanted to trade parenting time for money, uh, which was good because I'm not offended by it, but you know, sometimes in mediations, people do get offended. So I'm not um, offended by it either. No, <laughs> um, so um, I would say probably my style's closer to Bill's than Louise's, but it was interesting. And I think Louise's use of the whiteboard was effective. Um, but to me, you know, it's just two different flavors. It's like comparing two different flavors of ice cream. Both are good, both are cold, but you know, they, 
they taste different. Right. Are they both satisfying? <laughs> Bill, I mean, Carl, what do you think? Um, yeah, I, I would say I, I med mediate much more like Bill does, um, much more sort of factual. And my own personal style was to try not to get involved in, you know, say he had an affair. You know, I didn't want to talk about it. He didn't want to talk. So I wouldn't have talked about it. Now, whereas Louise raised a number of issues, these emotional issues, these relationship issues that um, I would stay away from. But I don't know whether that is part of being a transactional, a transformative rather, a transformative mediator is part of that style or that's part of Louise's style. Uh, I love the flip chart because I used a flip chart all the time. I find it essential. And um, I thought she really had a good grasp on the numbers and where we're going, et cetera. So, I mean, let's face it, the reason we had this role play today was to see whether we saw differences between a transformative mediator and a facilitative mediator, as much as anyone can be facilitated. And, and, and I think I see differences. Now, in the long term, would it be, how would it affect the outcome? Would it affect the outcome in terms of length? in terms of whatever, I don't know. I don't know. But I think we probably would have gotten the same place, but it also makes me wonder why there are so few transformative divorce mediators. Is there something about it that says, you know, it, it, people aren't as happy with it? I don't know. So I know, I'll throw, let me throw that question to Louise. Mm. Which one? You had a couple no, of the question, there, the question is, why are there so few transformative divorce mediators? I, why are there so few transformative divorce mediators? Um, I think there actually are more than you might realize, but most mediators who operate from a transformative framework are, are trained in relational conflict theory. And they're, they're, not, they're not saying to their clients, I'm a transformative mediator, except in the state of Virginia, actually, that has a requirement from the judiciary that mediators mm -hmm. must identify uh, what is their framework. Uh, but it's the only state that at least I'm aware of in the country that has mm -hmm. that requirement. Um, and so uh, I think for, for that reason, just in terms of the marketplace, you're not hearing about mediators who are transformative because they're not uh, telling other people or putting on their business card uh, that they are transformative, uh, but I suspect many are. The other piece though, in, in terms of practicalities, when, when people, especially um, people who have gone to counsel, when people have lawyers and the, the lawyers are um, experienced with mediation from a very caucus model, uh, they can't imagine that the mediator is not gonna be just separating the parties. And as we all know, those who are trained in a relational model, the magic is when the people are able to talk to each other. Um, and that can happen in both the transformative and a, and a facilitative model, but in a facilitative uh, model, it, it, can be, it, it can look very, very different rather than really following the parties. For instance, like what you saw and, and were noting about the emotional pieces, you know, well, Louise raised a number of emotional issues that's actually not what a transformative mediator does. Uh, she doesn't raise emotional issues. Uh, she or he follows the parties very closely. It's the parties who raise the emotional issues. And the transformative mediator doesn't just doesn't say that's emotional, I'll stay away from it. The transformative mediator says that's a that's a piece of information. Um, hot tamale or or chili cold. That's mm -hmm. as important a piece of information as a 5.4 million or a 40,000 or haven't paid the taxes or whatever it is. It's all, it all carries the, the same value. You know, it, there's a equal opportunity for everything that has been shared in mediation with a transformative mediator. So that all comes out of a relational conflict theory. 
Let, let me mention one additional thing. Both of you made me feel very comfortable, you know, which I've watched other people mediate and that's not always true. Your style is relaxed. It's relation, you know, you can relate. It's um, so I felt comfortable with both of you. Uh, Bill is known for that because he takes a lot of pills, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, isn't that Bill, you know, for us and for all of us on, on the um, webinar? Right. Isn't and, that and I really think, you know, as much of, so important? We have a fantastic skill set. But if we're not really humanly connected and really caring, it's a caring ethic. Yeah, I think both of you did that exceedingly well. Now, let me go back to uh, some more questions. Um, who did I do? Did I talk? Judith? Whoop, what happened? And Carl, there's some also questions in the chat. Well, I'm not doing those until. Okay, so if you need me to read them, I'll read them. Uh, okay. Uh, Raya? Hi, Raya. Can you hear me? Okay. okay. Yes. Hi. Hi, Louise. I was, I was going to say the difference that I see perhaps between the two styles is in the transformative, I think perhaps because you allow the different parties to express emotions, that when they finally achieve a resolution, perhaps they feel better about it in the end. Is that possible? I mean, because the issues are there. So if you make it just very transactional and just about the money and this and that, um, you can get a, you can get a resolution, but is it as good a resolution perhaps as when you air the feelings behind the requests? So that's been borne out in research, um, Rhea. The question that, that you asked that when when the participants, the clients, the parties are allowed to express emotions, they do feel greater satisfaction at, at the end. They feel better. And, and it's been captured in two respects that they themselves were able to make choices about what to talk about that was important for them. Um, so that's a yeah. of empowerment. And then the other one um, actually is, is a recognition piece where they feel that they are able to understand the other person better, even if they still hate each other. Um, and that can happen, right? But they can right. still feel like they understand the other person or the barriers a little bit more fully because they're, they're the ones who are going to leave our Zoom room uh, or, and our mediation conference room and go back and live their lives. So it's about right. them feeling stronger. Thank you. Yes. Bill, do you want to add anything? Yeah, no, I, I agree completely. When, when I actually do mediations, I do give my clients the opportunity to express emotion. Um, I tend to, um, I try to give them a framework for it and try and keep it under some level of control. Uh, Louise, I love the way you do it. I, I don't practice that way, but I was amazed watching you and listening to you. Um, how, how you brought the emotions well, I out. don't have the, the uh, reciprocal benefit of seeing you, so I can't wait to see all this afterwards, I, Bill, and learn from you. I, I know, um, but I, I think it's really important uh, that, that parties do have the opportunity to express emotion. I try to get them to talk to each other, which with so many of the people, when they come into the mediation, they wanna talk to me and they wanna talk over each other and just getting them to listen to each other. And sometimes that's through the repetition, the, the way Louise, you did. Sometimes it's asking them to repeat what was heard, but the, the idea of, of getting them off the specific topic onto conversation between the two of them is a vital part of what I try to do in, in the mediations. Thank you. Let me, um, let me just step in for a minute and say, I don't cut people off either when they get emotional, et cetera. You know, they need, I absolutely agree. They need to, the opportunity to vent. They need to say things that are important to them. It's just that I, I'm not going to deal with that like a therapist would deal with that. I'm going to allow them to say it, but 
not much more than that. You know, and I let them talk for quite a while. Okay, let, let me read the second code, which was supposed to be read within five minutes. And so I get in trouble here. The attendance code again is 2122, 2122. And Judith says, I can't figure out how to turn on my mic. If you would. If, it's a space bar. Hmm? It's in the lower left hand of your screen. You see uh -huh. mute. If there's a line through it, click on it. We're not there. Carl, if it doesn't show, she can hit her space bar. Right. To okay. hold. Hit your space bar. Well, while you're figuring that out, let's go to Antoine. Antoine, Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, Antoine. Hi, Louise from Calvary County, also. I, I was thinking I, I only know transformative, so I don't know any other way. And I think for me, uh, when Bill mentioned the word, you know, I give them a framework or I control, that's the two things that we as transformative or with me, we don't do. Uh, it seems to flow in however, what, however they go. Uh, I think for me, when uh, matching their emotions, doing check-ins, doing summaries, uh, reflecting what they say. So the conversation truly belongs to them. Um, and, and I think for me, it, it makes it almost easy, easy that way to go through a mediation. And, and also, as far as I, when, when I first tuned in, I wasn't sure because when Bill was asking questions, I was like, what is he doing? <laughs> he can't do that. But, you know, it's a different style of mediation. So, and then it, it made sense to me afterwards. But, you know, I, I love learning different styles. And whenever I see or work with the mediator, I steal some of it for my own. So I really appreciate being a part of this. And you guys did a phenomenal job. But, you know, I'm, I'm Team Luis. <laughs> uh, I, I just brought the home team with me <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all learn from each other don't we yes. uh, Aunt, you, you said there were some questions somewhere else you want to take care of those if, if i could just say a quick quick moment of work you know so bill and i may have had different styles um, each of us on this call had the way, the way we would look at it from a relational theoretical standpoint is that each of us as mediators has our own style. And indeed, it's why your clients come to work with you. Uh, and even, even the ones who, who are strangers, right? Most of them are strangers. They've come because they, you have, it might be a reputation or somebody else said, gosh, I've worked with this mediator before, whatever it is, people come to you. And so whatever is your style is something not only to be cherished, but to be nurtured. Our orientation to practice is something different. That's how, what it is that we believe people are about, what, what it is we believe conflict is about, what it is we believe about our role and what we believe about capacity. And so, you know, we can each have, you know, each of our own style, but it's actually a different orientation to practice if we're the ones who, at the end of the day, believe that we know better than the clients and can help them make decisions that in ways that we think are, are best that would not be a transformative approach. A transformative approach is one that believes in the capacity of the clients that they know best and that will follow them there. And wherever they go with a very proactive process is going to be the best for them. And so that's why it, um, I think it, Antoine, as you mentioned, it actually could be easier. It takes more discipline, but it can actually be easier with a good skill set. Okay. Um, Andrew, did you so, say there so are there's a question from Kate? Is the purpose of this to explore the different frameworks? I think it's to, defor to explore the different styles of mediation. Would you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, what, what the that, that was my purpose in setting up the webinar. So, yes. But, you know, even with that, we have differences in style within transformative and. Of uh, course, because each and, of you brings their own style. Different mediators. So, it's really, 
these mm. Louisa's style versus Bill's style in the end, right? That's what we're looking at. It's just two mediators who approach things a little differently, but with the, you know, a big heart and a, a, a focus on the clients. I think it's I think it's more than that, Anjou. I think it's looking at the different styles. You know, you and Carl could have been mediating, and we'd say the differences in Anjou's style and Carl's style, but then we can look at something that's deeper. And that's a, a different orientation to practice. Um, and there can be real overlaps in that orientation to practice. Um, and then some markedly, stridently different uh, um, guideposts, if you will, that will inform the mediator for what he or she chooses to do or not do in the mediation session. I've never found my clients are particularly interested in talking about my style, right? Yeah, right. That, that... That is not something that, you know, they're coming in unless they read some website about styles. They're not interested in styles. They're interested in your, your style, not what school of style you. So yeah, we wouldn't even say there's such a thing really as a school of style. Um, and it's really what I couldn't agree with you more, what I was sharing at the beginning. They're not coming in saying, you know, I want to transfer. They often, I actually do have some people, but they usually don't come in saying, I want a facilitative mediator. I want a transformative mediator. They come in saying, get me out of this mess. You know, I need help. Uh, this is, my life is upside down or the other person's crazy and I am very reasonable. So <laughs> make him see it my way or make her see it my way. I mean, that's usually how people come in, right? That's the conflict experience. Um, yeah. So let me, um, let me repeat a criticism that I often hear about transformative mediation versus I'll call them regular facilitative, whatever. That, that a facilitative mediator or any of the ones of value, they're interested in getting people divorced, right? People come in and say, I wanna get divorced. I'll get you there as you know, efficiently as I can. A transformative mediator I hear says, you know, that's less important to me than the way you get there. Does so is that, are you asking a question of me? Yes, I, I'm, I'm saying that's what I hear. I want you to sort of react to. Okay, that. sure, sure. So people will oftentimes, um, for one thing, it's so interesting to me that we are still wanting to see like, what are the differences? You know, we have to be so, so different. Um, it's really around like schools, like look at therapists, look at lawyers, you know, what, what school have, have you come from that shapes your practice? Mm -hmm. And to say that a transformative mediator would not be uh, equally as interested um, in something that a facilitative mediator is interested in is probably true, uh, but, it, but it's not framed accurately or authentically. That the truth for a transformative mediator is that we are interested in what the parties are interested in. So people can come in saying, get us divorced as fast as you can. And then you come to find out that there's been an affair and they never went to marriage counseling and somebody really still wants to try another go at this and it's not for three hours later. So if I were clinging to, I gotta get these people divorced as fast as I can, we've completely disempowered and torn down their own context. So we're just always following, 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 and following through. So if they did say that they wanted a divorce as fast as they can, and there are no like divots in that armor, they're like, well, that's one thing we can agree on. You know, you, you're following that. I'm not questioning that. I'm saying, okay, what, what does it look like fast? You know, what do you need? And it's really why a transformative mediator does quite well, even in a caucusing um, scenario with counsel or even in the commercial world, because it's the same process that a transformative mediator follows by following the parties and then always inviting them back to baseline. Yeah. Which Give me a sense of, of in, average, if you can, of someone comes in, they start divorce mediation, how long does it last? How many, oh. in, how many in-person sessions do you have? How yeah. long does the you know, whole thing 
We've been keeping track of this, Carl, for almost 40 years. That's how long Baltimore Mediation um, has been around okay. a year. And it has remained the same. It's anywhere from two to six three-hour sessions. That's, how, that's been in our practice. Two, thousands two. and thousands and thousands now of divorce okay. mediations. Okay. But uh, that does not terribly different than my experience, Bill. No, it, it's a little longer than many of mine, but it's not by much. Yeah. It, no, you know, I'll also have some that are on the uh, the other side of that, where it's really like one session and then there's an agreement. The second session is really taking a look at the agreement. Um, and some that are, you know, eight to 12 sessions because they, yeah. they're choosing to explore their estate. They're choosing to do a lot of financial planning around their family. Uh, they're they're bringing in many other other larger uh, factors than just the divorce. Um, yeah. Well, we have run out of time. I think this was absolutely great, Louise. Uh, I thought you were wonderful. Uh, you made us feel very comfortable. Anju was a pain in the butt, just like she's every time she's my wife. Uh, Makes you appreciate Marge. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Right. A very dear hearted pain in the butt, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> and Bill, you're always Bill. So thank you. You're very yeah. relatable, too. You're an <laughs> easygoing <laughs> guy. Everybody likes Bill. So uh, thank you very much. I'm glad everyone else who attended, I hope you enjoyed this as well. Go look at some of our other webinars. You can find them again uh, by Googling. NJAPM YouTube videos. And there you'll find 56 channels, quite a few of them. And um, with that. I have uh, to give a big shout out to Maryland. Yeah. <laughs> the, good state, the good state of Maryland and the wonderful mediators who are there. And we right. thank our, our mediator colleagues in New Jersey for inviting us and having us. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you. Know you guys are all going to be showing up. It's so I feel great. like I'm at a, con a convention, the great state of Maryland. <laughs> versus Maryland. Right. <laughs> and uh, let me remind you on the uh, February 14th, we have a, civ a mock civil mediation. So um, that will be an interesting, great cast of players. And then we'll go from there. So thank you all. Have a great thank day. You, Bill. Really love to be the other mediator with you. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.